the story of the thousand cranes basically there's a tale that there was this young child in japan who had an ailing grandparent and because the child was very worried and didn't know what to do they started folding cranes as a means of meditation focus and as a means to pray to god they folded a thousand cranes and on the day they finished the thousand cranes the grandparent recovered hello all today we are going to talk about a very important topic that is origami now why is it important we're going to see in this video why something which is supposed to be fun is important because today's topic is about origami and how people can get together with origami and for that we have santrupti das who's a to be architect in the school of planning and architecture new delhi where she's also been you know heading the installation society for the various fest and you know in this fest for a change all the installations were made out of paper and papers were folded and you know origami was used and this became a very beautiful thing to look at she's so passionate about origami that she's been invited to speak in an event called foldias that is sharing ideas through origami this event is going to happen on 29th of may link is in the description it's a free event please register and join so that she can be encouraged and you can learn so much about origami and how it's important not just as an art not just as some hobby but as something which is a global force moving people together so you know with this how are you santrupti hi thank you so much for such a lovely introduction i am really doing great so i'm just going to start with the question thank you so my first question is what according to you is art is it independent uh, to a particular medium or is it something universal or exclusive tell us all about what you think about art <laughs> so i don't think there can be something called an art enthusiast or an artist or and a non artist because i guess whatever we do in life has a component of art uh, something as basic as deciding what you want to wear in the morning is you designing the way you will look like so it is you creating art out of yourself so when i talk of origami origami is one medium of doing that art multiple mediums uh, what we really know as art be performing arts or visual arts apart from that i believe even photography could be considered an art the way uh, once you cook you arrange your food that is also art so to me art is basically doing something to improve the way a certain thing is like we talk of design is a way to improve or propose a different solution art also to some extent does that it is not as technical probably as design art could be personal for example today i like a pink color dress so i'll wear that not because it appeals the audience but it i like it so art is something that you do to make yourself feel good or to express what you're feeling So you know so with this art. I'm going to thank you with this I'm going to ask you about origami you know the topic of today's okay. discussion what is origami what is its history since when have you been doing origami tell the viewers about it okay so origami is the art of paper folding and it roots back to the japanese origin it's got a uh, it was a folklore kind of a thing in japan where people would fold models very basic models which are very very popular like the crane so this is how it began but now it has crossed the barriers of being just an art form or just something you know a crafts class would have a summer holiday crafts class would have it's gone beyond that and now what it covers uh, i'm going to be an architect so i've seen origami being used in architecture but i also know that it is being used in space science it is being used in the healthcare industry it's been used a lot of places so it's basically to do with folding now it's gone beyond the definition of being origami which means uh, folding with paper to folding in general so i like to look at origami as that as something which is just about folds so even the way you would fold your clothes is a skill you have to align your edges and all that so that's also to go with the broader perspective of origami so what's it about origami that you're so passionate about 
uh i think it's one thing that i do for myself like there are chances when i am also doing drawing architectural drawings just for the sake of submission but origami is something that is my niche so it's something either i'm sad or happy or excited or thankful like it's a way to communicate all these emotions a lot of people i have seen sketch or yes. doodle so that is what i do with paper so uh, for them a sketchbook is where and a pencil is what they use their tools for me my tools are paper so prominently paper i have used other materials so as well. you know you just spoke about paper and you know how different people use different medium so you know for somebody who has to start origami you know who's new to origami how should they start learning about it what should they be doing to you know begin origami uh i think before they know it probably they have already begun origami Okay. And why do I say so? Because uh, let me guess. Let's look at. Let me guess. It's all about yeah. those aeroplanes we used to make in the class. Exactly. And... It's the aeroplanes. It's the paper boats. It's it's also wrapping your gifts nicely. You know, you wrap your gift a little more delicately for a friend you're closer to. So, doing that little ribbon on top of it, or even like I said, folding your clothes, or even. every human that is born is actually born is the fetal position is also a folded position i look at it in that perspective that is also there and uh, when we look at notebooks when you are flipping your pages when you are closing the book they are all actually technically folds there is a hinge movement happening and all of that is folds so to say that there has to be a clear starting point to origami i don't think so and if you talk about the origami art or you know something that you can a post as origami then probably just grab a sheet of paper any so you know before like you tell I us about before you tell us about what how to do it the next question is about what are the tools and materials required so that you can tell us the process and the tools and materials okay. required together okay okay all right great so the tools would be any sheet material to start with if i'm giving this lecture to uh, beginners i would like to say that you can start with any simple paper the copy paper a4 copy paper that we use for printing is like the most convenient or something that i used when i started origami about 11 years ago so that is what i was using and apart from that one might also use uh people use cartridge sheets any kind of sheets um people have also used metal cloth uh plastic so and now we also see people making molds out of origami and then pouring in a material for example concrete to create a more rigid origami form which is just the form and not the folds so that's there apart from that your biggest tools are i think your hands so the best way to do origami is to do it by yourself with your hands similarly how sketching is the best done by hand and not drafted on a computer edited uh, software so that's the uh, thing then there are a lot of tools that we can use as a bone filer there are different kinds of things that are being used and also industrial origami uses machines as well there are laser cutting machines there are dyeing machines and all so you know when you uh, talk about origami we think about art we think about the aeroplane which you threw at our teachers in the class we think about all the you know good aesthetic things which you which we can create like the installations that you created for your fest in the college but is there some utility to origami can it be used for something purposeful you know i don't mean to say art is not purposeful i mean something which can be utility based something which can be useful apart from just appealing to the senses okay so uh let's go by the most important profession as we know during the pandemic is the healthcare profession uh there are research which talk about the stent that is used that is passed on into the body that actually has very minute folds for it to be able to expand like this i have a model which looks similar to that so it could be like this it's a small little thing that can now pass into the blood vessel and then it can open where it has to and that is possible because of folds it can uh, reach such a size also so that is what uh, in the healthcare uh, industry it's being used in also it's being used uh, for a lot of other tests that are done in the healthcare industry in space science origami is used to basically make your entire uh, machinery very compact and transport it to the space and then open it there then 
in the architecture and design industry it's greatly greatly used for facade details for interior design even furniture is greatly inspired by origami installations could also be somewhere in the other end of architecture design and space design so that then origami can also be used as a learning tool to basically mark off things dimensions proportions geometry so that is also there in origami that one could see the use of origami then it's i guess a very good medium of making gifts or packaging so okay. yeah the lot of things and i don't think i'll be able to confine all of this into this absolutely discussion. absolutely absolutely yeah so you know from medical from being inspiration for medical uses to you know being practically used in a spacecraft so that you know it can be compacted to you know architectural use since you're an architect and you know we are uh, speaking to a lot of architects in this video tell us a little bit you know before i go and talk forward about how can it be used in architecture like can it be used for the models or for the design process tell us okay, about so it. yeah so i have just been a student right now so i've actually not done any projects that are at that scale or i know uh, of so i have used it for model making i've used it for designing conceptualizing ideas or even for understanding structure it's the same way as someone understands all of it by a digital model by a simulation i understand it much better by origami again it's a personal choice to do so then within the profession of architecture it's being used for facade treatment because it provides for amazing shading devices there are buildings that use this concept for shading their and bringing down their energy requirements then it is being used of course for structure and for even the folded plate structure that we talk about in our structure studio is also actually can be considered as a sheet being folded like that so that's also origami uh, when you open the door as simple as a door which is very important to any architectural space probably or a window it also has a hinge so how does that hinge work gives you whether it's a fully openable door a 180 degree door or a 90 degree door so that is also origami there so you know thank you and for and of course telling. interior design can take origami into panels for the roof ceiling any of the walls so there's a lot of things that can be done so thank you for telling us about the architectural point of view of using origami now a very important question you know which is the basis of your conversation that you're going to have next week you know for foldias and for the conversation that we are centered today for that is you know whether origami is something that you have to use personally or is it something that has to be used at a community level or a global level is it a personal thing or a community thing tell us about it thank you for this question i think it's a very good question first and i think it's both personal and communal at the same time because i believe if it was not personal i could not have contributed to a community activity involving origami it has to start with me but when i say it has to start with me i also mean that when it is happening in the community i also get inspired so it is a two way process uh, what i mean by how it could be used for community building is the first way would be that uh, i have done a lot of uh, uh, installations in college so one incident of me using origami or me identifying origami as a tool for community building would be that i think in 2017 we were doing this one installation where we had 20 units to be produced of a very complex model it's an advanced model in origami and although i could teach the full to a lot of people and i could ensure everyone was doing the full correctly but i did need people to do it and you know to convince them ki see okay you don't do origami but maybe you can do it and this outcome when they saw it lit up and when they felt like there's a part of them also in that they felt associated to the installations earlier what was happening was they were just consuming art now they are participants in that art in the creation of art as well so Absolutely. i think that is the first way in which origami builds a community i know a lot of people in my college because i have been involved with them in folding so that's the first thing it liberates people to feel like they are connected to art 
Absolutely. And art to me is very synonymous to life. So they are more aware of things. So that's the first way. The second way would be how I used origami as a therapy. It was one trial thing that I had done with uh, pediatric pa patients in a hospital where we went and I spoke to these kids. Some of them I remember had some medication going on. Some of them had surgeries scheduled in the evening. And for that one hour, we just folded. We talked of colors, we talked of papers, we folded and people would click photographs with those flowers. And you know, for that one hour, there was some hope instead. And these are patients who are like terminally ill. So uh, that is, it's very important for them to distract or to be focused on something else for some time. And then it was such a satisfying thing to see them decorate their rooms with these butterflies and flowers that we folded with them. So that's the second thing. The third thing that found the light of the day the most during this lockdown is that when everything was going wrong and we were all disconnected from each other, uh, similar to what Foldias does at an international level, I started something which is mini and which is very a scale, but we would meet every Tuesday and a group of friends, classmates, we would meet and we'd fold every Tuesday, talk, talk about our lives, but while folding. So like I'm talking to you right now and I'm constantly folding. That is the kind of, there's this, it's uh, a Hindi word for it would be Sutradhar, which is a narrator to the entire thing. So that is how it helps to me to connect with people in this time when I'm not able to talk to a lot of people I've not met most of my friends for more than a year but then I meet them over video calls where we fold so that's one thing uh, in addition to this an interesting thing that happened was the new students in the college whom I have not even met even once they ended up creating such a strong community for themselves with origami it was I think their tool for bonding with each other as well and for bonding with us seniors as well so that's the third point the Fourth point here in origami would be uh, how, how you instantly connect to a stranger via me. I'm sure while you're listening to this, you would also feel like, okay, this is something that is relevant to me, probably. So that's the thing. And I'd read somewhere that a smile is a universal language. Everyone understands a smile. Similarly, when you give a small flower or a small token of appreciation to someone when you meet them or you just say that I hope you have a nice day and regardless of whether they know you or not whether they'll ever meet you again or not but they would always remember you a smile is something they can capture in their memory but the small little flower or a very simple there's a very simple leaf that people make so something like that will remind you of kindness that is much required in this world so you give them you are blessed in return and they feel good about their day also so that's the fourth thing and when i bring all of these together they reflect back onto myself onto my personal life so keeps me happy and sane and so that's how origami is both personal and communal to me so you spoke about the world, you spoke about community. So I'm going to talk about international community. So you know, is there an international community of origami enthusiasts? What are the kind of conversations that happen in between them? Okay, so uh, there is one which I know of, which is the Origami USA, which I think is pretty famous. People would know it. The, they have conventions and all. So they fold together. They are just a group of origami artists who in the offline times used to meet up and now they meet online and they fold together, they discuss materials. So that's one. Apart from that, there are a lot of more uh, associations like this. Foldias is one of them where people come together and they spend an hour or two. It's like, um, you know, we meet people in a park and do yoga together. Yes. So probably something like that. Or every evening, you know, you have a group of friends you go out for chai with. So it's like that. It's like a hobby. Plus, it's like a means to start a conversation, according Absolutely. to me. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. As you're saying that it is so essential, you're saying it is, it connects people, it liberates people, it has utility value, it has art value. So I would ask this question, should this be made part of school curriculum? Why do you think so? Yes. Or why do you think so? No. 
of course it should be made a part of the school curriculum actually indirectly it already is when you ask uh, people when let like school and a professional college so when you ask people to make models in a professional college and they make the laser cutting file what they essentially doing is visualizing the way the sheet is going to fold together to form a certain thing a three dimensional thing origami i think translates a two dimensional paper into a three dimensional existence so it's very important if we were taught about how mountains and valley folds work it would have greatly helped us in realizing how to make those laser cut files Absolutely. even better so Absolutely. that's the thing and in elementary or primary school or in k12 schools i think it's a great tool to understand maths for someone um, i've had friends in school who didn't really understand maths in as much detail as probably the others did and if there was a tool like this where you take a square sheet of paper and you tell them that you know take the two opposite ends and join them together and what you get is the diagonal of the paper and then you tell them and you show them manually practically that this is longer or square root of two times the side of the paper so these are little little ways in which probably you can inculcate origami into the curriculum also dividing a paper into eighths into 32s so people are able to do that recently i learned a way to also understand limits and derivatives with paper absolutely you know so uh, there's so much that you can be explored around origami as something you know which is so easy to use in resource limiting settings all you need is a piece of paper and that is something that you know every student can afford and with a small piece of paper if you can do so many wonders i think it should definitely be essential part of a school curriculum so you know with this you can you know put a lot of light on origami i just want to request you to show your viewers a little fold thing that you can do right away and you know the easiest fold oh you made a swan that's so nice yeah so while i was talking to you yeah it's a crane it's a crane this has a very important story to go to because you know it was one of the most prominent models in conventional origami which was japanese origami and it's folded worldwide oh probably one of my favorite models as well and of a lot of origami artists you consider that you know once you start folding for so many years something very complex would be your favorite model but this is a route to connect you back to you know what origami was brilliant brilliant you shown us uh, the the swan or the crane so you shown us the crane which uh, is so beautiful to look at it's so simple yet it is so intricate and it can be you know so articulate it just represents all the features of the crane and all the viewers will be so happy to look at it you enlightened us a lot about origami about the international community about how people can start origami about why you are so passionate about it what was the history of origami whether it is a personal thing or a community thing so with all that learning you know viewers are definitely going to gain and take up origami as a hobby and later as a team building exercise community building exercise so you know to end this conversation what is your message to the viewers i think there's no right time to start origami like i mentioned you've all, probably already started origami so just get along and you'll find what interests you there are many many things in origami so just start off take a paper and today just fold one fold and do it over time i think one thing about any kind of art or anything that you do in life is practice so the more you do it the more attached you are to it the more focused you are so keep doing it and of course there will be bad days that i have had zones of time when i have not wanted to fold because i have not wanted to express a certain thing but then keep trying to fold what i have really done during the lockdown is i have my paper right beside me on my bed so that whenever i feel like folding i am constantly folding so i wouldn't say that origami is your calling is everyone's calling probably while folding you would realize that no i don't like origami as much i like the photography part of it or i like researching about paper a lot more so i think this could be a stepping stone for you to realize what your calling is that is the next thing and of course i believe origami has a lot 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 to do with how you interact with people so 
if you find something else that helps you interact with people i think you should be open to it and if origami is your thing then just start folding away maybe just learn the screen fold five or 10 of these the next time you go and meet people give them and tell them that you were thinking about them i think that happiness on both the sides of this equation will promote you to fold a lot more and whenever you require i am always there around if you really want to contact and ask about origami or you know just talk about origami i think that's required the conversation about origami is much more important because when you converse you will have to fold something to show and you would start folding absolutely 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 so for all the viewers the instagram handle of santrupti das is right in the description you are most welcome to contact her and also comment on this video and ask us questions so that we can you know help you with origami or if there's anything else that you want to share say no more than welcome and also please do not forget to register for the 29th may important very important discussion which is being held internationally called fold ideas sharing ideas through origami so it was great having santrupti das talk about origami thank you very much thank you